ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶುದ್ಧಸ್ಫಡಿಗ ಸಂಕಾಶಂ ಶುದ್ಧ ವಿದ್ಯಾಪ್ರದಾಯಕ ಶುದ್ಧ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಚಿದಾನಂದ ಸದಾ ಶಿವಮಹಂಶೇ ಶಂಖಾರೂಪೇಣ ಮಚ್ಚಿತ್ತ ಪಂಕೀಕೃತಮೂಜ್ಯ ಕಂ ಕರೀಯ ಸಾಮಾಯ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯಮಾಶ್ರೇ ಭ ಸದಾ ಶಿವ ಸಂಭಾಂ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾಂ ಭಾರತೀ ಕರುಣಾಪಾತ್ರ ಭಾರತೀ ಪದಭೂಷಣ ಭಾರತೀ ಪದಮಾರೂಢಂ ಭಾರತೀ ತೀರ್ಥಮಾಶ್ರೇ ವಿದ್ಯಾವಿನಯ ಸಂಪನ್ನ ವೀತರಾಗಂ ವಿವೇಕಿನ ವಂದೇ ವೇದಾಂತ ತತ್ವಜ್ಞ ವಿಧುಶೇಖರ ಭಾರತೀ ಮಾಲಾ ಸುಧಾ ಕುಂಭ ವಿಭೋಧ ಮುದ್ರ ವಿದ್ಯಾ ವಿರಾಜತ್ಕರ ವಾರಿಜಾತ ಅಪಾರ ಕಾರುಣ್ಯ ಸುಧಾಂಬುರಾಶಿಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಶಾರದಾಂಬಾಂ ಪ್ರಣತೋಸ್ಮಿ ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ವಿ ವರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಉಪರಮಃ ದ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ವಾಸ್ ಉಪರಮಃ ಕಹ ವಾಟ್ ಡು ಯು ಮೀನ್ ಬೈ ಉಪರಮಃ ದಿ ಆನ್ಸರ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಬೈ ದಿ ಆಥರ್ is swadharma anushthana meva we were saying that swadharma anushthanam is the answer given by the author for uparama we saw there are three meanings first meaning is maintaining the peace of mind which was already obtained by shamaha the second one is sanyasa ashrama the third one is swadharma anushthanam what do you mean by swadharma anushthanam in our scriptures all our activities are divided into five types we saw they are nitya karma naimittika karma kamya karma prayaschitta karma and nishiddha karma these are the five types of karmas that is where we stopped we will go through briefly what are these karmas and then we see what is the swadharma anushthanam nitya karma and the naimittika karma these two karmas are the religious activities prescribed by the scriptures primarily for our spiritual growth inner growth nishkama karma they are duties it is not whether we like it or not it it doesn't depend on our likes and dislikes we have to do vedanta friendly karmas what is nitya karma these are the activities or karmas to be done regularly regularly does not mean daily daily also but at regular intervals for example sandhya vandanam has to be done every day three times a day for those who do not have parents they have to do tarpanam amavasya amavasya comes so they have to do tarpanam and other pitru karyams shraddha comes monthly or yearly shraddha it is also called nitya karma just because it is occurring once in a year it doesn't it doesn't mean anything it is it will come under nitya karma now what is naimittika karma these karmas are not done regularly but they have to be done at the specific occasion when the situation happens these karmas have to be done for example grahanam this uh, surya grahanam chandra grahanam in english we call solar eclipse and lunar eclipse they may not come every year even if they come they may not be visible in the place where we live so when they are visible to us we have to do karmas tarpanam and etc similarly marriage vivaha karma simantonnayanam then at the time of child birth we have to do some karmas then brahma upadesham all these are specific instance based karmas marriage is naimittika karma it is not nitya karma so don't be under the misinterpretation so it is to be done when the occasion comes this is called naimittika karma 
then the third one is kamya karma kamya karma are the activities that are meant only for material growth nothing to do with spiritual growth at all that is for prosperity name fame etc we do lot of activities they are kamya karmani materialistic activities fourth one is rayas chitta karma these are the activities which are meant to neutralize our own past negative activities there is non positive activity negative activities non activities these karmas are meant to neutralize or nullify the effect or the result of my past negative activities they like consuming a medicine when i have some disease after consumption of medicine the disease is gone so this is like uh, this is what it is so this is prayas chitta karma prayas chittam or parihara karmani it has got nothing to do with my material growth or spiritual growth only neutralizing the impact of positive activities supposing i consume something which doesn't go well with my digestive system then immediately reactions do come i start vomiting and all those then i go to doctor get some medicines then consume then the uh, then the disease is gone so it is okay there is no uh, physical health or anything like that there is no fresh health or nothing but whatever has happened is gone that's it so this is prayas chitta karma then fifth type is nishiddha karma these are the karmas which people may feel beneficial to them but they are harmful to others and subsequently they will find they are these are harmful to themselves also therefore if a person is sensitive he should not do these karmas because he, because it will affect other people therefore we should not do if he is considerate and sensitive scriptures ban these type of activities they are banished they are prohibited actions by our scriptures scriptures give a huge list of such actions we can learn them not for following them but not doing them for not doing them for avoiding them it is like in diet doctors prescribe do's and don'ts so these are like don'ts that's it so what does the author mean by uparama he means swadharma anushthanam eva what does he mean by swadharma gradual increase of first two types of karmas that is nitya karma and naimittika karma these are the vedic rituals prescribed by the scriptures our scriptures do not prescribe any laukika karma all of them are vaidika karma only so nitya karma and naimittika karma are swadharma we have to gradually increase these first two types nitya karma and naimittika karma which are meant to form my spiritual growth and gradual reduction of kamya karma and prayas chitta karma and finally giving up nishiddha karma at once therefore swadharma means performing nitya karma and naimittika karma and confining only to these two karmas that is what he says swadharma anushthanam eva eva means only that's it the next one is fourth subdivision fourth discipline is titiksha so the question is titiksha ka what is titiksha the guru answers शीतोष्ण सुख दुखादि सहिष्णुत्व दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड यूजफुल यूजफुल वर्च्यू फॉर एनी बडी नॉट ओनली फॉर स्पिरिच्युअल सीकर्स बट फॉर ऑल ऑफ अस नो ह्यूमन लाइफ इज यूनिफॉर्म विथ बेड ऑफ रोजस वी विल कम अक्रॉस सिच्युएशन्स विच आर पेनफुल विच आर अनप्लेसेंट इन लाइफ दट इज लाइफ it is mishra tatvam sukham and dukham that is why they ask us to read puranams quite regularly because all the people 
including dharmika people including good people they all confront painful unpleasant experiences in purana for example bhagavan's avatara pratyaksha avatara rama and krishna they have gone through painful experiences throughout for krishna he was born in jail so it, you know it is right from the birth the life was challenging for krishna and he was avatara so the moment he has taken manushya avatara he had to go through un, uh, unpleasant situation also and dharma putra an embodiment of dharma had to live in forest for 12 plus 1 13 years he had to live therefore life has pleasurable and painful experiences of various gradation some of them physical called vyadhi some of them mental called adhi therefore adhi vyadhi sahitam janma unfortunate fact is when we go through pain it is not a comfortable happy experience first of all when there is pain the mind itself becomes a bharaha ashantasya mano bharaha a burden with a heavy mind life becomes dragging drudgery challenging very difficult no question of taking to any constructive activities still more difficult to take up with spiritual activities so every human being has to find different methods of handling painful situation the question is how to handle pain we have some conventional methods we normally follow these methods at least three methods we can list one is finding out a remedy or a solution to the situation by bringing out appropriate changes in the condition sometimes the remedial measures may work often the remedial methods are very expensive physically financially mentally time wise energy wise it is very expensive and worse often we find out the present pain may go away but it will be replaced by some other pain replacement of one with another in tamil they say katti poichu vaalu vandathu like that they say it is like a person carrying a heavy load on one shoulder then because he feels very heavy he will shift the weight from one shoulder to another shoulder so immediately he will feel relief from the pain but how long the relief may last maybe for a few maybe a few minutes maybe for a few seconds that's it once again he will start feeling the pain on the other shoulder therefore one method of handling the pain this is also conven- this is conventional method is finding out an appropriate change in the situation the solution method it may work it may not work it may be expensive often it will replace one pain with another pain this method of finding this method is finding a solution method for our pain this is one method then the second method we go on tolerating the pain either because there is no solution there is no remedy available or it may be more expensive or it may bring some other pain we know about that therefore we don't attempt to find a solution we decide to tolerate the pain we go through the pain tolerate the pain whatever be the reason because of the pain the pressure mounts both at body level as well as at mental level a time comes when we are not able to handle the pain any more therefore the only solution we know is what convert the pain into anger that that uh, that is very uh, we we are very comfortable with that you know we all know about it we get angry with that and we explode blowing the top letting out the steam on somebody who is nearby poor fellow he had to face all the brunt this is another method so explosion method then the third one is 
we cannot explode because people around us are either they are elders or they are very close relatives or maybe it is my boss so i cannot do anything so i tolerate the pain i suppress the pain silently suppress go on suppressing for years i don't explode and victimize other people but i victimize myself therefore lot of psychological damage is caused to me and i become a worthless person useless person psychologically damaged because of deep trauma therefore suppression also does not help because self victimization and suffering this method also do, doesn't work our scriptures talk about the fourth method which we generally do not know which we don't know bhagavan has given all of us a capacity to tolerate the pain to withstand the pain endurance tolerance every one of us has this capacity but only only difference is it varies from individual to individual the tolerance limit the level of patience differs from one person to another person that is why we call somebody as short tempered person other person may be called long tempered i don't know so situation remaining the same one person may explode immediately some people may explode after 3 days some people after 10 days we all have got titiksha but the threshold varies when the pain is within the threshold level threshold limit we do not experience it as pain at all that is pain is not pain when it is within the threshold limits which is called situation pain is a pain when it goes beyond the tolerance level therefore supposing we find a method by which the threshold limit or tolerance level is increased by appropriate sadhana by right attitude by right understanding then this is called titiksha other people may call it as pain call this as pain but for me i do not look upon as pain because my titiksha my level of tolerance is higher generally indians are known for tolerance because we know how to accept the conditions of our roads full of ups and downs bumps all through but we don't complain we accept them with smiling face so it is usual for us for people from other countries maybe it is shocking the situation may not be acceptable to them so what is pain is heavily subjective when the pain remains within the threshold mind is called mind calls it as situation and we accept it when it goes beyond it it is beyond the threshold level it is called pain therefore titiksha means increasing the level of endurance tolerance resistance power both physically as well as mentally more than physical mental that is more important in fact this is called mental health an unhealthy body a sensitive body picks up any disease around any disease very easily it is very hospitable ground very hospitable body for not for people but for diseases so we have to maintain titiksha tolerance level both at physical level as well as at mental level that's why our ancestors have built temples in places which are not accessible that easily for example kedarnath bhadrinath and all those places which are even today difficult to access with all infrastructure very difficult to access why have they built temples in those places because we have to develop we have to enhance our mental strength as well as physical strength 
to travel all the way eat whatever food we have and sleep wherever we can find whether it is hot or cold we have to tolerate and then go to the temple have darshan of bhagavan it is called tapas so titiksha is very important that is why our ancestors because they know bhagavan is everywhere why should he be restricted only to kedarnath and badrinath no it is not the objective is to increase our endurance level it is tapas therefore we have to undertake all such pilgrimages for increasing our both mental as well as physical health a healthy mind has a high resistance that most of the situations in life which other people call it as painful this mind does not see as pain at all therefore the author says the fourth method that is elevation of the threshold level of our pain which is called pain endurance capability so we saw four methods solution explosion suppression and the last is the best one is elevation of our titiksha pain endurance capacity should be increased therefore the author says sahishnutvam prepare your body and mind to withstand situations in life at physical level is called endurance at mental level is called patience both together called titiksha endurance at physical and patience at mental level both are called titiksha therefore sahishnutvam with regard to what shita and ushna cold and hot physical capacity to withstand the ups and downs of life especially in physical condition summer winter rainy days nowadays we have a facility to control the temperature all the time keeping at 20 22 degrees centigrade with the help of air conditioner our body gets used to living in ac conditions throughout but you know you feel comfortable happy it's okay but what happens is it is not a permanent solution sometimes the ac may fail or the electricity may go or you may have to undergo some travel outside where there are no facilities available if your physical body can endure all situations you can complete your assignment or project without a grumbling without problems without murmuring so even for materialistic goals also and more for spiritual growth this titiksha is very important sitoshna sahit sahishnutvam we have to develop physical toughness which is called endurance next one is sukha dukha sahishnutvam sukha dukkham with respect to emotional pains caused by people around mostly by relatives close relatives other people we all have expectation about how other people should behave with me how my daughter in law should behave with me how my father in law should talk to me how my employees should respect me my subordinates how my superior should behave with me all those are expectation any expectation which is not fulfilled to my satisfaction it causes pain <clears throat> it can be caused by their behavior body language the more sensitive you are greater will be the pain therefore sensitivity always should go with tolerance greater is sensitivity greater should be your tolerance level higher should be your tolerance level you want to share supposing you want to share the pain with somebody other people are not available to listen to your stories one more pain so pains keep adding therefore sukha dukha aadi like that all unfavorable situation unpleasant situation you should have the capability to bring all of them within your threshold level threshold level or tolerance limit this is called titiksha 
you increase the level higher and higher to bring any unpleasant situation within that particular level. This is called Titiksha. After increasing the tolerance level, now you are Samatvam Buddhi you have, so your tolerance level is very much increased. Supposing you come across a situation, supposing a child misbehaves with you, commits a mistake, you may choose to correct the child, not because you are intolerant, because your tolerance level has gone up, but because you don't want this child to suffer in future. It is not good for the child's growth. With that intention, you, you go to correct the child. Therefore, a person with titiksha may work to improve situations around, not because of his intolerance, but because the situation has to be improved. Therefore, intolerance-based correction is a struggle, samsara, suffering in my life. And therefore, increase your titiksha level. This is titiksha. So, we have seen four virtues, four internal disciplines. The fifth one is Shraddha, sixth one is Samadhanam, which we will take up in the next class. With this, I will conclude this session. Pur Namadav, Pur Namidam, Pur Nad, Pur Namudachyate, Pur Nasya Pur Namadaya Pur Nameva Vasishyate, Om Shanti 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 Hari Hibum. Sadguru Pahimam, Sri Guru.